All right, hello everyone and welcome to the Egyptian Winter Cup coverage. This is sponsored by Gamers Lounge. Thank you so much to them for putting this tournament together. This, of course, is going to be Egyptian Dota, putting a whole new region on the map. I'm super excited for this opportunity to cast it, and uh, I really hope that this region grows and gets its own meta and gets competitive in the professional scene, because I think that is uh, something that we're lacking right now. We've got a couple regions of really strong teams, but obviously there's so many more strong players out there. So the Egyptian Winter Cup, going to be trying to work around that, get some Egyptian players on the map. And so far, we've had some amazing matchups. Today, we're going to have WWE Superstars versus, versus GX Gaming. I'll be your caster, Android, or Annie, whatever you want to call me. I've got a stats man here. Squashed Grape's going to be joining me, throwing up some awesome stats, keeping you guys engaged in what's going on to this game compared to other games. We've got an incredible draft under here so far. Gyrocopter picked up as the final fic pick for WWE Superstars. These lanes are going to be fantastic. Queen of Pain looks like she's picked up for a safe lane carry by GX Gamers. I think that's a very nice play. Uh, I think perhaps it could be a little bit greedy if she doesn't get the space she needs and she doesn't get the rotations for the kill she wants. But uh, we will certainly see going in GX Gamers. They've got so much gank potential. Pudge, obviously known for his crazy hooking skills. Queen of Pain, she's so mobile. Tusk can get in, start the fight. Start our crushes are amazing. And of course, Templar Assassin, once she really gets those items, she can get in and start crushing. Let me go ahead and throw up a HUD. Got to block the screen for just one second here. Hope you'll forgive me. And uh, here we go. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and introduce the teams on the side of GX Gaming on the Radiant. We've got, goodness, what do I call you? I'll call you Bra on the Tusk. It's going to be Comzy on the Pudge. Over here, we've got Never Again on the Templar Assassin, followed up by ASD on the Slardar. And who am I missing? Uh, all, all the way behind him, we've got Punishment on the Queen of Pain. Here on the Dire side, on WWE, we've got Gyrocopter playing the Gyrocopter. Um, right behind him, we've got Omar playing the Vengeful Spirit, John Cena gonna be on the Lifestealer, the Undertaker playing the Night Stalker, and Hornswoggle on the Bane. We are gonna see a full five-man smoke here from the Dire. They're rotating in, they're trying to see what they can find. Radiant are postured up around this bo bottom rune, no one at top, it is just no man's land up there. Here the smoke is gonna get popped, Omar goes in, he has the stun leveled, who's the target here? It looks like it is gonna be the Queen of Pain, she does kill her blink, she gets away, there's a full three-man crush here. It does connect and now the Radiant, they've kind of sprayed their damage here, the Gyrocopter Rocket Barrage is going to be up in another second, we've got a Nightmare here on the Bane uh, going out onto the Pudge, but I don't think there's going to be follow up from that, although Comzy, he's cliffed, he's blocked in, but Gyrocopter walks away, not doing the damage they need, Pudge could be the first blood here however, as uh, Comzy just going to be taking too much damage, John Cena gets the first blood on that, and now Bane walking around, maybe looking for more, but in terms of the Bounty Rune split, we've still got a, a one for one, so maybe heading back to even as both mids go ahead and grab themselves a Bounty Rune. Gyrocopter mid, well, it's a little unorthodox, but I think it can definitely work. Templar Assassin clearly going to be harassing the heck out of him. Does level those side blades first, so that's going to shoot right through the creeps and into the Gyrocopter's face. Down here in the bottom lane, we've got the safe lane Queen of Pop... Queen of Pain, there we go, up against the Undertaker on the Night Stalker. I think Night Stalker is going to be fantastically survivable here, even having the potential to get some early kills on the Queen of Pain if he plays his cards right. But here we got Tusk going in, just smacking him up. Going to be losing that clarity, but uh, Undertaker probably going to be taking a bunch of damage here. Going to be forced to tango up and play a little bit safer. Here in the safe lane, we've got Slardar having a clown of a time here up against John Cena. These two could certainly just go at each other. In fact, I'm not entirely sure who would come out on top if it came down to a full engage. But down bottom, we might have some more kills coming out here. As Undertaker getting very, very low. Pudge going to be uh, doing what he can to chop him out, keeping that rot on. And Undertaker will end up falling to a snowball. Tusk getting the kill for that, uh, courtesy of his W ability. In the top lane, though, we are going to see uh, Omar get harassed heavily by ASD. Omar does have the missile if he needed to use it. But uh, Slardar obviously going to make that Slithering Crush work to his advantage. Well, in the mid, Gyrocopter having a little bit of a tough time. Only has two last hits to his name. Templar Assassin sitting at five. And uh, Gyrocopter, he's only got the Fairy Fire left for regen. So he's got to be very, very careful about how much damage he takes. There's going to be a Tusk initiating with the Snowball. Never again. Trying to get himself another kill. Rocket Barrage is spraying onto the Tusk. But now Ice Shard's trapping in the Gyrocopter. Tusk might end up falling here just because of tower damage. In fact, Tusk trying to get down. But the Nightmare from the Bane is enough to stop the damage just for now. Templar Assassin still gets the kill. But Tusk does fall. So now it's going to be Never Again running for her life. She's going to head down here. She gets brain sapped up, but she's got plenty of health. Grabs herself a Bounty Run on the way out here in the bottom lane. Undertaker going to be taking a Shadow Strike from the Queen of Pain. 
but uh, he is certainly tanky enough to deal with that up here in the top. Slardar, just casually sitting, let's take a look, take a look at last hits. It is going to be John Cena topping out the chart with 10 of them. He's got a stout shield. Uh, he's feeling very comfortable here going up against the Slardar. He's obviously not going to be punished by any sort of range. Uh, he does have that rage skilled if he needs to walk away from any spooky initiations. Now we're going to have another snowball here onto the Gyrocopter mid lane. Gyrocopter using that rocket barrage to do what damage he can, but he is still going to fall. He eats the fairy fire before he goes down. One more hit will do it. Can he get out of this one? I think Tusk going to be slapping him up. One punch of the mitten and he's dead, but they do trade the Templar Assassin. That's a huge kill here for WWE. This could be a little bit of a turnaround coming out. In fact, the kill score is even, and I think taking down the TA is a little bit more important than the Gyrocopter, although both are arguably very crucial in terms of being able to have to sit in lane and get farm. Here in the middle, we've got a very low health tusk. He does have one tango left. Gonna be taking some bottle sips from the Templar Assassin while she's still fresh off the well. Nice strategy there. And uh, just continuing to harass the Bane out of lane. Derricopter, he's gonna be scooting back in. He's got his plane. No boots just yet. So uh, he's a little bit poor as far as things go. Hornswoggle here though. Here to help him out. Secure some kills for him if he'd like. Very tense middle lane as we've cut pretty much uh, two on two here. Hornswoggle going in, does end up casting that in Feeble, making sure Never Again can't hit as hard as she'd like to, but well, that's just fine. It's only level one. Oh, down here, Tusk tried to take Ancients, I believe, and just it didn't work out for him. Up in the top, we've got Lifestealer getting very close to being all the way under tower, trying to go onto ASD, get something out of it, but while well, that squishy fish, he's playing this thing very safe. He's sitting at third in the net worth chart, or sorry, the last hit chart. In terms of net worth, uh, he is going to be sixth. Now Night Stalker at his first night time, he's uh, feeling the presence of that hunter in the night. Uh, he's going to be a little bit speedier, a little bit angrier, harder to get a hold of, and maybe a little bit more kill potential. There's going to be a rotation in from the Tusk though. He's going in, he's angry, he wants to find something, but in the mid lane, well it looks like that's where the Dyer's going to focus their energy. They've got the Gyrocopter and the Bane again. This little duo going to be doing what they can against Never Again, but Never Again's getting some fantastic farm. She thir she's third on the net worth chart, surpassing both of the dire heroes in the mid lane, and while well, she's got very high kill potential, especially if the Tusk rotates in, they've got a Tusk and a Pudge. Looks like there's going to be a Snowball initiation, connects onto both, Pudge goes in, the Rot, the Hook, they're going to get the Gyrocopter, Bane could follow as well, he casts the Nightmare here onto Comzy, and now Never Again, going to be taking some side blades right to the face. Hornswoggle might end up going down, there's the Refraction here to try to keep the Templar Assassin safe from taking tower damage, Tusk gets the kill on that. That. Templar Assassin still healthy. She's still got a bottle. This is going fantastically for the Radiant so far. Here in the top lane again, Life Stealer. He's sitting top of the net worth chart, but uh, only one kill to his name, and that was the first blood. So Slardar, we've got to watch out as he could be getting very close to his blink dagger. Crush connects, but again, no real follow up unless Tusk and the Pudge rotate up here in the top lane. They're looking for blood, and they might end up finding it. We're going to have a crush here. Connects onto John Cena. We've got a snowball as well. I don't think this guy's raging out of this one. Sprint's going to be used, but hook connects. Beautiful job by Comzi. Nice prediction there. And they do end up securing the kill on the Lifestealer. That throws him back down to number three on the net worth chart. Templar Assassin and Queen of Pain taking the lead. This looks like it could be a nice, easy game for the rating if they keep this up. Punishment going into the Undertaker. Undertaker actually going to be thrown out of Void, making Queen of Pain take just a little bit of damage, but I think she can dish it back. She's got that blink. It's only level one, but that value point is so crucial. Never again. Trying to go in onto Omar. Does catch her with a psionic trap, but Omar just going to be walking off that slow. And uh, back to even lanes, I guess. Undertaker, again, having some trouble. Pudge is here, trying to see if he can get a real cheeky hook. In fact, he might be throwing it out right about now, but no. Undertaker going to back off, giving this a little bit more free lane to the Radiant Punishment, seeing what she can get out of that. Never again. Grabbing a regen rune that's going to be absolutely huge whenever she wants to use it. And uh, gonna help her definitely with her survivability. Does she want to initiate onto the gyrocopter right now? Well, I guess the call is going back to farming. She's doing very well in terms of last hit. She's now got 20 to her name. Pudge does get pinged out by the dire. They know he's there. And, uh, maybe mid is where the next initiation is gonna go down. I'm gonna watch here as Tusk definitely wanting to do something. He has the ice shards. He's gonna catch out Bane. Bane actually able to get the nightmare off onto the Tusk. We're gonna have a rocket barrage here doing a lot of damage to Templar Assassin. She has no refraction. Can she get out of this one alive? There's gonna be a stun here from Omar and it looks like Tusk trying to do what he can. Mitigating the damage with a snowball. Just delaying his death a little bit. Hornswoggle trying to finish him off. In fact, will finish him off. The Vengeful Spear gets the kill on that but Templar Assassin goes down. Pudge is now here. Only level four so no dismember just yet. He will still get the kick. Pick off onto Hornswoggle but now Pudge himself might end up going down. Looks like uh, 
The Wave of Terror gonna be catching him out. He needs one more last hit, though. He's gonna get out just fine. In fact, Slardar now coming in. Might be able to punch the Gyrocopter. He is in Viz for now, but looks like he will get out to safety. We've still got more action being thrown down mid here. Omar gonna take that negative armor. There's gonna be a snowball as well. Slardar joins the party. The snowball rolls. Does it bash? It does. Omar gets briefly stunned up, but now Hornswoggle's here. No fiend's grip on him just yet. ASD might be the target here, but a triple man crush secures Tusk a kill. ASD might pay with his life, but that was beyond worth it. He does eat a fairy fire. The hook comes through. Catches the Undertaker. Undertaker's got void, though. Can he ca cast it before he dies? He'll go on to... Comzy does use that void. Comzy getting very low, but one last hit secures the kill. Comzy gets away with five HP. This fight is going fantastically for the Radiant. The kill score is now 11 to 5. Hornswoggle, one of the lone survivors in the Dire, trying to defend this tier 1 tower, but I don't think he'll be enough. Gyrocopter, he's feeling very poor here. He's gonna be six on the net worth chart. Templar Assassin, she's gonna be number three. She's just got more stuff out than the Gyrocopter. It's about eight minutes in, so the net worth and gold charts aren't gonna tell us a lot. But just taking a peek, it does appear that uh, GX Gaming are in the lead. Certainly not insurmountable, but uh, the Radiant, this is their game to throw. They've got a fantastic initiation, wonderful team fight, and uh, let's see what they can do with it as we've got more rotations mid lane. This is just an all-out death battle here. Templar Assassin, Pudge, and the Tusk, super strong initiators, and now they've got the damage to back it up as Never Again joins the party. Looks like Tusk is trying to go in deep snowball here underneath the tier 1 tower. Night Stalker is here trying to punish him. The hook does not connect. Goes through onto a creep. There's a call down from the gyrocopter. Secures the kill onto the Tusk. Wave of terror catching out the budge, but never again feeling safe. Just going back to farming. Up in this top lane, we've seen Slardar just have a really nice time here, but Lifestealer, he's barely left the lane. In fact, he's second on the net worth chart. He's picking up his face boots right now as well as his drums. So that guy is getting his starting items out, but he needs something like an armlet or a basher to really have an impact in these team fights. Queen of Pain going for the double robe of the Magi, so it looks like she is going to be going in for the Orchid first. I do like this pickup a lot. I think it gives her nice reliable stats. Hook comes through onto the Gyrocopter in the mid lane, and now Comzy taking a lot of damage. Might actually go down here, but no Templar Assassin there to back up her buddy. Picks herself up her fourth kill of the game. Never again is dominating this mid lane. She might be able to get the tower soon enough as well. Please excuse my voice. I do have a little bit of a... Lost Boys coming through, but we've got Punishment not giving me any sort of break. He is going to get silenced up by the Night Stalker, but, well, Punishment is a very slippery one. Hard to get a hold of her, and she dishes out so much damage. So Queen of Pain just going to be fine here behind the Tier 1 tower. No cares in the world, though there is going to be a Bane trying to see if he can capitalize on this. There's going to be no Fiend script just yet. He's level 5, wants to go and wants to find the co but that kill is not going to be going to his hands anytime soon. Tusk is back in the mid lane. We've got a Vengeful Spirit here. She is level 6 now, so she does have that swap. The team fight positioning is going to be just a little bit easier for the Dire. We also have a call down ready here. There's the swap to start things off, but immediate snowball call down from the Gyrocopter. Looks like the snowball comes through onto the creep wave. Radiant, they just want to get out of this one without losing anything. Wave of Terror comes through, but there's no follow-up, so mid is a clean disengage once again. Templar Assassin is going to be, uh, Popping into that Mel just to get some damage. Hook goes through, does not connect onto anyone. We've got four Dire Heroes sitting mid. They gotta make something happen here now, or they're wasting their time, splitting their XP a little too thin. Here in the top, it's just the classic battle of Slardar vs. Lifestealer. We've seen them go head-to-head -head all game, and in terms of uh, net worth, it looks like they are almost even here. Lifestealer a little bit on top. Uh, Slardar... Not quite as ahead in terms of last hits. Mid lane, though, we are going to see Templar Assassin do what she can with a psionic trap. Double slow here onto the gyrocopter. Pudge is looking for a hook, but can he get the angle? And he gets a creep. Meanwhile, bottom lane punishment just pushing on this tier two, ta tier one tower. Excuse me. Looks like it will end up falling dire. They do have a fortify if they want to spend it. They're gonna have to use it soon if they want. But here in the top lane, we've got the first fiends group of the game. ASD gonna be going down. Life stealer securing the kill on that. He now has 800 gold in his bank. Pudge is here, but there's not gonna be an opportunity for him to get any revenge. And now Omar, in some trouble here, takes a stun right to the face. Vengeful Spirit might be getting out here, but uh, Queen of Pain, the ult completely whips. Venge is going to be just fine. In fact, Queen of Pain might end up going down. She has the blink if needs to use it. Swap comes out. She's going to blink herself into the trees. Can the Undertaker find her? She's going to be TPing out. In fact, the juke is just perfect. She gets away to base just fine. Meanwhile, Tusk ends up picking up the Vengeful Spirit on the back lines of that. She tried to swap herself to safety, but only brought herself closer to the enemy. 
Never again. Sitting here has an uh, illusion rune in the bottle. Might be using it to push the tower next creep wave she gets. But oh, in the bottom lane, there's going to be some action as Tusk. He's not getting out of this one. He can snowball, but he can't live. Call down is just too much. In fact, Gyrocopter takes the kill for that. That is, again, his fourth kill of the game. But he does have five deaths, putting him just a little bit behind the Templar Assassin in terms of farm. Here in the top, we've got a Pudge, we've got ASD trying to go in. On the back lines, we have Bane, no ultimate available on that guy, so it's just going to be too Radiant Heroes pushing against a Dire. I'm not sure if they have the resources to defend this. Bottom lane, we've got Dire, again, trading some more aggression on the tower. Queen of Pain, she's back, but she has no ult for another uh, good chunk of time here. Undertaker, uh, night time is going to run out relatively shortly, so if he's going to make something happen, well, let's make it happen now. In terms of item builds, nothing really huge coming out just yet. Pudge is going to go in, hook off the mark on that guy. Slaughter saving up for his Blink Dagger. He's still about a thousand gold off though, so uh, not really anything coming out for that guy. Gyrocopter looking to initiate here onto the Queen of Pain. She's got three points in her Blink now. Uh, she's getting closer and closer to that Orchid, so it, the time is now before she gets that incredible Disable item. She's all alone here. You can feel Gyro's temptation. He's got the call down if he wants it, but wants it, but he needs to disable her Blink first. Uh, if the Night Stalker wants to go in with the Void, that'd be a great start. He just needs to get close enough. Here in the top lane, we've got Slardar running for his life as he realizes the Bane. He's got his ult up. Uh, but now it's the initiation onto the bottom. We've got the call down. We've got the Void. Uh, Quap looking to blink. We do have a disconnect from the Pudge, so we are going to wait for just a moment here for him to head back. I mean, what would uh, some good old Dota games be without pauses mid-fight? Just going to... Sip some water here, make sure I'm uh, not going to lose my voice completely. I really hope I get to hold on to it for the next couple of days, because I've got a big tournament coming up next week, and I'm very excited. Oh, so Pudge is going to disconnect. I am uh, a little bit caffeinated right now, if you've noticed that I've been talking like a thousand words a minute. I just got done casting the Navi versus Vega series on Wii Play, and I'm... Definitely riding the high from that. It felt great to be on such a big cast. I've never had more than 30,000 viewers before, and holy moly, it felt weird. I'm not usually one to suffer from nerves, but, well, I was trembling. I didn't know what to say, so I hope it came out decently. If there's any viewers on my channel that uh, follow me through from that game, thank you so much. And now Queen of Pain. Well, we're back in the game, and she goes down. Slardar, he TPs in, but I don't think there's much this guy can get done. He doesn't have a blink just yet. He's got the negative armor. He's trying to go in onto Undertaker. In fact, he gets the crush. Gonna be taking a lot of damage now, but Pudge is here. Pudge has the dismember, finishing off the Undertaker, and now Gyro's the target of the aggression. Rocket Barrage comes through completely onto ASD, but another crush might secure the kill here. There's gonna be an Ice Shards as well as a Snowball. Tusk getting punched up in the air and will not live to see the ground again. So this uh, initiation that looked so bad for the Queen of Pain actually going in Radiant's favor as they get a pick off on both the offlane Night Stalker and the mid Gyrocopter. Taking a look at the XP and gold graph, we're hovering at about just about 5,000 uh, on both fronts. And we could see another initiation coming here as Omar, not feeling so safe, got the swap as well as the missile. Going to be taking a bash, however, and just going down so quickly. There's so much damage from the Radiant. Templar Assassin has an arcane rune now, so she's feeling comfortable. And Quap goes back to farming. The kill score is 17 to 9. So uh, Radiant almost doubling up the kills of the Dire. That doesn't mean they're out of this, however, as, uh, you know, if Lifestealer gets huge, he can certainly go in and just wreck a team fight. ASD might be trying to connect here onto John Cena, using the Rage to get away. Still no blink on the Slardar, but they've got the Tusk with a Snowball, with a Walrus Punch. In fact, looks like that'll be the call, but there's going to be a call down here from the Gyrocopter doing a lot of damage. Snowball comes through from the Tusk. Tusk will be the first to fall in this initiation. ASD now running for his life. He finally gets his Blink Dagger while he's heading back to the safety of the tower. Meanwhile, Pudge trying to run for his life, but there's a night time Night Stalker running after him. Pudge has got the hook and the dismember as a last resort, but he's so slow, trying to be TPing away now. I don't think there's anything to break it. He gets back to base safely, and the Dire Heroes, well, at least uh, they don't get uh, wiped there. That's something. But in the bottom lane, you've got Queen of Pain just rocking the split push. She's getting closer and closer to the Orchid, and that's going to be pretty much a one-team fight as soon as she gets that Orchid and cast it onto a high target hero. Pudge, in terms of items, he's got his Urn of Shadows. He's going to be going for a four staff, which is going to feel real nice for him. The mobility is going to be great. It's less expensive than a Blink Dagger, so the value is going to be there. ASD, Nightmare it up right now. In fact, John Cena taking a lot of damage, and the Queen of Pain finishes him off with that pure damage ultimate. In fact, a crush onto the Bane finishes him off as well. Two kills here for the Radiant. Can they make it three with the Gyrocopter? Gyrocopter's got the ult, but Slardar, he's got the Blink. And uh, the damage is coming out, but ASD, he's just so big. He goes in, gives Queen of Pain another 
kill, and now TP is cancelled uh, by, I believe it was the Night Stalker trying to get in there. <laughs> so now we're gonna see uh, Queen of Pain just going in onto the tower and a uh, creep clear by the rest of the team. Radiant look like they are totally in charge of this game. Taking a look at the gold and net worth charts, it just keeps going up and up and up. Almost 10,000 on either front, which is enormous. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Templar Assassin's got her Desolator and her Treads. She's hitting hard while she's uh, making that armor strat feel real, real nice. Slardar with the negative armor as well as the Desolator Aura is going to be fantastic for the Radiant. Going to make those towers melt down. Going to make those heroes just melt like butter in a frying pan. Now it looks like Pudge, he's hunting for something. Throws up a nice ward. Sees if he can grab a hook. He does get the hook here onto Vengeful Spirit. Gonna go into immediately into a dismember. The stun is not there. In fact, the Night Stalker goes down. There's a call down from the Gyrocopter, but it's not taking down the Radiant Heroes fast enough. Gyrocopter, he gets stunned up. Crit there by never again from the Meld Strike. She is just absolutely wrecking face. Seven, two, and four. Well, now looks like John Cena, the one remaining hero on the Dire, scrambling back to his base. Trying to see if they can make this comeback, but again, it's just looking more and more grim. About 12,000 gold advantage for the Radiant right now. Almost 12,000 XP. So just the levels, the items, they're there on the Radiant and they're not on the Dire. And that's just a huge deficit to come back from at under 20 minutes in the game. We're going to see Vengeful Spirit see what she can do. She does pop off a uh, sentry board, takes down this. That's another 50 gold in her pocket, but... Well, she could get punished here, as they're going to see the Bane. Pudge, no ether lens, so he's not going to have the longest hook possible. But, well, now we've got just Radiant applying all-out pressure onto the mid-tower, trying to force a fight here from WWE, and I think WWE just don't have the superior team fight. We're going to see a snowball start things off, going into the Undertaker, blinking away, so Tusk just kind of harassing him back, trying to maybe force out some ultimates from WWE. Maybe get the spells out of the way, like the gyrocopter cooldown, the swap from the Venge, if they can get those done. Well, then the Radiant have even more of a window to go in and win these team fights without those scary abilities. Queen of Pain might be in some trouble. She's got the Blink, she's got the Orchid, but there's five heroes after her. She blinks away, but she's going to get caught up by a Lifestealer Rage. She's going to get open wounds, swap back in. Can she get away from this one? No. It looks like she's going to give 600 gold to the Vengeful Spirit. And again, the Dire hold this just for now, but Templar Assassin... Well, she is, uh, like a chat viewer pointed out, she's farming up a storm. She's now got her own Blink Dagger, so there's blinking and slamming all around the map. Templar Assassin Blink, Slardar Blink, well, Queen of Pain, she's got a built-in Blink, and Pudge with the Force Staff, so so much mobility here on the Radiant. And WWE, they're positioning, well, aside from the Vengeful Spirit, there's not a whole lot they can do. Night Stalker's fast at night, but that's about it. Called out into the Roche Pit as maybe Dyer a little bit suspicious of where the Radiant are at. Hook comes through on the Pudge, connects onto Omar. Not going to be a dismember to follow that up. So for right now, it looks like uh, Templar Assassin is just going to head into the pit, unscouted out by that wave of terror by the Vengeful Spirit. Wants to go in on the Roshan, and certainly she can take it. Lincoln's popped. Never again making that thing just slide it down. The HP pool is dropping, and there's not a whole lot the Dire can do. In fact, I'd argue this is just GG, because two lives on any other Radiant heroes is going to make it that much harder for Dire to lock them down. They're desperately missing lockdown. They've got a lot of single target damage here from the Night Stalker, but that's about it. Here in the back lines, we're going to see Tusk go in, and it looks like the Gyrocopter gets picked off immediately. Queen of Pain going to be following up, doing heavy damage to both the Vengeful Spirit and the Undertaker. Templar Assassin, while well, she gets an Aegis to boot, and this might be the end game. Pudge goes in. Hook is not quite on the mark, but certainly keeping Dire on their toes. WWE, well, they've got to make a big last stand before the racks go down. So Templar Assassin, she's got the Aegis, Force Staff, or sorry, Blink Dagger, Desolator, as well as a regen rune in the bottle. How do you kill this hero? Well, I think the answer is you focus all your resources on that, but meanwhile, we're just going to have Slaughter crushing up your entire team and spraying out the damage, so the combination of Templar Assassin and Queen of Pain might just be too much for the Dire to handle. John Cena sitting here in the jungle. He is going to pick up an Ogre Club. So it looks like he's going for the S and Y, but certainly not going to be allowed to finish that. He's trying to scramble away. He's got the phase boots. He's in his rage form. He's going to be trying to TP out, but Slardar's got the crush. Walrus Punch breaks the TP, in fact. And uh, John Cena sent back to the fountain. Gyrocopter doing what he can to try to get some revenge. ASD going to be squiggling away. And in fact, looks like there's going to be a call down here. 
As a Gyrocopter might lose his life once again, he does go down. Comzi is on a wicked sick streak. Hornswoggle gonna be falling as well. That Meld Strike just chunking him down from more than half health. Templar Assassin is beyond huge right now. And now the Radiant are killing off the poor little puppy of Gyrocopter, taking out his pet just to really get into his feelings. The Snowball being committed as well to take down that Alpha Wolf. So, uh, Helm of the Dominator Gyrocopter, he gets to go to the pound and pick himself up a new puppy. Queen of Pain is going to be going for the Aghanim Scepter next. She picks up the point booster. I think her ultimate has been very useful in these team fights. It does penetrate magic, so Life Stealer, he can't rage himself out of this one. And uh, yeah, I think once she completes that, the low cooldown on her ulti, the added damage, it's just going to be too much for the Radiant or the Dire to deal with. Vengeful Spirit, again, trying to do what, he, what she can. The Dire are now confined to their bases. They've been killed in almost every corner of the map. And the Radiant, they're just taking over here. They're going into the Dire jungle. They're getting the creeps. They're putting down Vision. Dire are trying to chase here with a smoke, but again, can they catch anyone? And even if they could catch anyone, what's the turnaround going to be like? As uh, never against the immediate target. She gets silenced up. In fact, Comzi going to be in some damage here. It's going to be taking a call down right to the face. All the dire heroes are here. Comzi might be the first to fall. In fact, he will. Life Stealer gets the streak for that. But now the Undertaker gets slammed down. Never again is beyond huge. She's on a wicked six streak herself, and she's going to be taking out the Gyrocopter as well if she can catch up to him. Looks like she's going to be using that psionic trap, although goes into a snowball here. Rotating it onto John Cena. Going to be taking a walrus punch to the face. Hornswoggle falling as well. ASD on a killing spree. The lone survivor is the gyrocopter here. And uh, where is he at? Is he going to be getting away? He's uh, he's back in the base. He does manage to TP out of that disaster. But now the tier 2 tower going down. Could be a tier 3 as well. Aegis is going to get reclaimed soon. So if TA wants to go YOLO, now's the time. Looks like they're focusing on objective gaming. Making sure the Radiant don't lose the lead that they've worked so hard to get in terms of gold and XP. It's at the 20,000 minute mark at just about 20, 23 minutes. Hook comes through. Does not connect. Uh, but now the tier 3 are under siege. I'm curious as to what the win rate is at over 20,000 XP and gold deficit at under 25 minutes in the game. TA, she's diving deep. She's got the refraction and she's not really that scared. Although we are going to have a lot of damage here coming on to punishment. Snowball keeping everyone safe through the call down. It's only a level 1 call down for the gyrocopter. Now the radiant heroes are so deep in the dire base. Showing absolutely no mercy. Bane goes down. Hook comes through. Gets the life steal out of the base. Swap in. Trying to get never again down. In fact, never again might go down. That's just an Aegis though. She could respawn. In fact, she will respawn. Full health. Full mana. She's got all her cooldowns. Unless she gets punished immediately right here, she'll be A-OK. -okay. She is actually getting kind of low. She hops into a safety snowball, bashes up the gyrocopter outside the base, but ends up blinking away. Looks like Tusk is going to be the sacrificial lamb here. He goes down, but at what cost? The tier 3 towers are still under siege. This could be Rax here, unless the Dire get their act together right now. They're trying to find the kill on the Queen of Pain. She blinks away to safety. Gyrocopter's here spraying out some damage. But Templar Assassin goes in with one hit left on the tower. Can Templar Assassin live here? If she goes down two times in a row, this could be a, the advantage that the Dire need to get back in the game. We're going to have a Fiend's Grip here connecting onto ASD, so they get both the Tusk and the Slardar down. But uh, Queen of Pain, she's still alive. Templar Assassin's still alive as well. The big girls, they're still here. They're still hitting hard. The call down from Gyrocopter catches out no one. Trying to go in onto Comzi. Comzi could just go for a hook dismember if he wants. He has the four staff if he needs to get away even faster. And I missed that as Templar Assassin goes godlike. She gets a kill here onto the Bane. No surprise. She can just slap him down from pretty much full health. In fact, she's going to be doing that again. Going into Omar. Oh my goodness. The damage coming up from the Radiant is just too much. To WWE tap out now. Looks like Gyrocopter trying to get back to base. But the Meld Strike is too much. Beyond godlike Templar Assassin. It's not something that anyone can go up against. So the GG is called. Uh, looks like GX Gaming. They take this best of one series. WWE. Well, better luck next time. This is some fantastic Dota that we're seeing here. And the Ancient, well, it's going to be fallen any time now. Hopefully. I really hope so. Well, looks like it has been cancelled, but... Um, is the game over or not? Well, okay. Well, apparently the GG call has been cancelled. The Hornswoggle is going to get picked off anyway. Uh, hopefully a secondary GG comes out. And, uh, well, now it looks like John Cena taking an unbelievable med strike side blades to the face. Omar going to be nightmared up outside the base. Slardar coming in. The crush misses. In fact, Templar Assassin getting dragged back in. Bop is still relatively healthy. Takes one strike of the cool down, call down to the face. Uh, she might actually fall here. I'm really not sure what the, uh, if we can get an admin say on whether that was a real GG call or not, that'd be fantastic. I, uh, 
I uh, don't know what to do here. There's a team fight. Uh, Night Stalker goes down. Looks like the Tusk's gonna fall as well, so maybe Dyer returning this one. Um. Trying to see what's going on here, if the game is over or not. And, uh, okay, apparently it was a fake GG call. I didn't think that was, uh, allowed. I really hope the admin steps in on that one, because that's a little bit of a, a poor manner thing to do. And now, uh, Gyrocopter going back to farming. I, uh... Kind of lost my hype after that, honestly. I thought we were going to see a nice uh, forte here from the Radiant, scaling into a GG call, but we're going back to farming. Um, yeah. So, Dyer doing their thing, trying to hold their base. The first set of racks is down. In fact, they only get the range pick off. But Radiant, they can probably easily scale into this. Templar Assassin going in, dicing down the Bane, uses that BKB. She's going to go ahead, continue her Beyond Godlike streak. She could turn on the Gyrocopter here if he wants. Gyrocopter, he's got almost no items to his name. He is going to go for the BKB, but it's far off still. He has the call down. It's level 2 now, but I don't know if it's going to do enough damage. Oh, the Radiant. They're gathered up here. They want these mid racks. They're probably going to be able to find them next initiation they get. In fact, the Snowball going to be starting things off. Slardar can follow in with the Blink Crush. John Cena's going to be uh, dodging the damage here with that Rage. Never again might end up going down here. He just take takes a missile to the face, getting four staffed out. Blink's out as well. ASD going to be swapped back into the fight. Might end up going here, but the hook connects. Looks like Lifesteal gets the kill on Slardar, but Templar Assassin gets the kill on Vengeful Spirit. Now we're going to see the second nighttime being popped here as uh, Punishment wants to go in, wants to finish things off. There's going to be a dismember here. Undertaker goes down, followed up shortly by the Gyrocopter. Uh, Walrus Punch going to be connecting onto John Cena. He's hopping into a buddy for safety. Hornswoggle, uh, if he goes down, it's not just him going down. As, uh, Punch ends up falling. Queen of Pain trying to get out with her life. Templar Assassin as well. And uh, Pudge going to be TPing back to base here. Gets out safely for now. So again, just back to Dire holding their own base. Queen of Pain sitting here trying to tease out anything else she can get. She actually, uh, she's got that completed Aghanim Scepter. She's got a secondary Blink Dagger as well. So ultra mobility in this fight. She's going to be using that ult just to clean up some creeps. No worries about that. And uh, Tusk, well, he's got an Aether Lens. So those Ice Shards and that Snowball, well, they're going to be shooting out farther than before. Uh, blink Dagger as well on that guy. So let's see how many Blinks we got. We got a Blink Dagger. We got a Blink Dagger. Another one. Another one. And another one. So all five heroes on the Radiant have a Blink Dagger. That is something really, really hard to deal with on WWE. They've got to get incredible lockdown, keep everyone in place, and that's just a little bit too much of a task for Vengeful Spirit. Tusk runs into a gyrocopter. Usually you'd see him more scared. In fact, he's in the middle of five dire heroes. Tusk, what are you doing, buddy? He tries to blink into the trees. He's going to be TPing out, and that is the definition of space created. He gets out just before the missile taps him. Radiance bottom tower. Queen of Pain now working on her next item. Looks like it will be a BKB. She does have the Ogre Club saving up for that Mithril Hammer. And, uh, yeah, Templar Assassin. In terms of her item progress, well, she's got a full Daedalus. She's got an Invis Room bottled up, and she's got an 8-second BKB charge left. Roshan going to be respawning in just a few, and that'll be a huge advantage for whatever team gets him. I'm thinking the Radiant Earner must be better... better bleh, much better position to go in on that, but you never know. Dyer is showing some signs of life right now. So overall, we are going to have the Pudge trying to tease something out. What am I hearing? What is happening? What do I hear? Oh, it's the Tusk going in for the Walrus Punch wind-up. God, that's annoying. Well, either way, looks like Radiant there might be making their last stand here. Going here onto the high ground. The Fortify is going to be popped, so that Fortify is no longer available for the rest of the racks. All the Dire Heroes are up. There's no call down from the Gyrocopter just yet. Night Stalker, he wants to go and he wants to do something, but Templar Assassin, she's hitting so hard, she melts down the tower. And it looks like the first dismember going to be going out, going to be trying to catch out John Cena. There's going to be a stun here from the Vengeful Spirit. The ultimate from the Queen of Pain does so much damage. Bane falls, and now the Meld Strike just chunking down the Gyrocopter. There's hopefully the real GG call as a... Uh, 
punches up, doing everything, every which way, Radiance winning. We've got some pauses, we've got some disconnects after the GG call. Please let this game be over. Radiant are running away with it in terms of gold and XP. It's over 25,000 in both assets, and now looks like the second set of racks could go down. Radiant calling out good game, Dire calling out good game. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, all the Dire heroes are dead. I want this to end a little bit. I don't think the Dire are able to come back, and they know it, but the GG call keeps getting cancelled. A little bit of a, a poor sportsmanship thing in that regard. Oh well, you know, it's all good. Another GG call comes out, so we're on uh, number four, if we're keeping track. And it finally went through. Alright, GG here. Uh, GX Gaming take this best of one series against WWE Superstars. I hope you enjoyed it. We got to see some interesting lineups. GX Gaming, they just got into a literal and figurative snowball and well, the Dyer couldn't come back from that. I hope you enjoyed the cast. I am Android, A-N-N-E-E-D-R-O-I-D. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I always tweet before I go live. So feel free to look forward to more coverage of the Egyptian Winter Cup or uh, any other casting projects I'm working on. So thank you so much. Huge shout out to Squash Grapes on stats. Throwing up the knowledge there in the right-hand corner. And I hope you guys have a great day and take care.